After being condemned by the demanding, screaming crowd, Jesus was condemned and the murderer was unbound. The man named Barabbas was freed when Jesus was arrested, as the exchange for the sinner was already being attested. The sinless man Christ was to pay this man's punishment in the same way Jesus' death has paid for the breaking of God's covenant. Being taken away at the cries to be crucified, Jesus had to carry his own cross to the hill where he would die. Along the way, Simon from Serene would take the beam from Jesus' shoulder as he carried it behind the man who had women there mourning. He turned to them and replied that the cry should not be for him, but for them. These women were not followers, but sympathizers, daughters of Jerusalem. Their mourning was to be undone, as the women could not have understood why he had come. They could not comprehend what this man was about to do. In their eyes, he was simply a man whose plan had fell through. But much deeper than that, this man would bring back God's people. And far from feeble, his death would accomplish the plan. But the people of Jerusalem simply did not understand. But who could? Who could comprehend how the torturous death of a supposed criminal could lead to the kingship of this man born in a stable? After the conversation with the weeping women, two other men, both criminals, were led out there with him. They came to the place of the skull. One was hung on the right, the other to the left of him. At this time, there was a cry, Jesus yelling, Please, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. Yet the soldiers were there mocking him. Giving him a sponge of vinegar to increase the pain, they presented the claim, If you are the king, then save yourself. Little did they know that he could. The Son of God, suspended on the cross, remained all-powerful. In a single breath, he could relinquish his death and be taken down from all this awful evil. But that was not the Father's will. So while he could change it, he couldn't. For the only means by which redemption could be accomplished was to be this one. The scriptures proclaimed it, now Christ was fulfilling it. Not by power, but by justice. As he suffered and was punished, the crucified King, the Son of God, was being crowned despite the crowds. Below him it read, This is the King of the Jews. They put this there in spite, yet ironically they got it right. Behold, this is the King of the Jews, the one who has come to make a way for me and you. Yet while some will accept it, others will reject it. As proof of the latter is the criminal who denied him as a master. Instead, he too questioned why he did not save both himself and them. Salvation, of course, from their payment of their own sin. Yet unlike them, Jesus had no reason to die. There was no sin in his life for which he had to die, unlike those other two criminals who would have to pay with their own lives. Yet while they had to pay for the sin of the crime in this life, Jesus was making a way for them to be saved in the next. The first criminal only saw the immediate, thinking the expedient choice was to be set free at that moment. Yet Jesus was offering a far greater means of atonement. Not from the law of this world, but from the law of the Creator. Jesus the Sustainer is simultaneously the Redeemer. But the first criminal didn't see it. The other criminal, though, rebuked him for he did not fear God. The other criminal realized that his own crucifixion was warranted for the crime that he had committed. But Jesus was innocent and his time left was limited. So the criminal turned and asked, Remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus responded with affirmation, Surely you will be with me in paradise with his proclamation. How could it be that one of the only ones to understand that he was king was this criminal man crucified beside him with nothing in his hands to bring? It wasn't the chief priests or the women from Jerusalem. It wasn't the judge or the crowd or the soldiers who were mocking him. It was the crucified criminal with nothing to his name. Hung in naked shame, he turned to the king who was before him as the same. This man of sorrows was at the same time the king. The rest of the people couldn't get it, but this one criminal did. And because of that, his death in this life would be greeted with eternal life in the next. And at the conclusion of this text, there is only one question left to address. 
It's whether you are the criminal on the right or the left. <laughs>